A recurring argument I hear from people who don't like fighting games is something along the lines of, if you're not good at the game, you don't get to play. To be fair, there is a kernel of truth to that statement, and yes, this is mainly due to one mechanic, but hold that thought, we'll get to that in a bit. Just like many arguments people are throwing against fighting games, whatever truth there is to it isn't actually specific to the genre. But realistically, if you're the kind of person who thinks this way, I don't believe I'm going to change your mind today. And that's fine, because that's not what I'm interested in doing. What I want to look into is the interesting question this statement raises. What does it mean to be playing the game in fighting games? When you listen to people who say that, there is a strong implication that hurting your opponent's character is the only relevant part of the game and nothing else counts as playing. One might argue that if you're not good at receiving a serve in tennis, you don't get to play. I guess eventually you get to serve, just like you eventually go back to round start in fighting games, but is hitting the ball all there is to playing tennis? Bringing this back to video games, let's take Battle Royale as an example. If you spend 5 minutes walking around without seeing anybody and without shooting your gun, are you playing the game? Well, of course, I'm surviving, this is the whole point of the game, you might be wanting to say. And to that I respond, you are absolutely correct, but... Victory goes to the last one standing. And therefore, wouldn't you agree that actions you take to stay alive constitute playing the game? I've already talked at length about how defense is very much a part of playing the game, so I don't think I need to dwell on that a lot more. But I have to admit that, in order to be surviving, you've got to be able to use those defensive options in the first place. So, I guess it's time to talk about the C word. It's undeniable that being on the receiving end of a combo can suck, especially if there's no combo breaking mechanics in the game. And I have to concede that, in a genre where you normally have to make several decisions per second, being stuck in a state where you can literally put the controller down for several seconds can be described as questionable design. Some games actually kind of acknowledge that and will cut a long attack animation short if the first few hits are enough to kill. I'm quickly going to repeat that if the average combo length in a game is more than what you can tolerate, there are more likely several other games you can play with shorter combos. I do want to point out, however, that the combo length isn't necessarily the problem in itself, but rather how it feels. This may be just me, but I have much less of an issue taking a 12-hit combo in Strive than I do some 6-hit combos in Street Fighter 6 or Tekken 7, because in the former, there isn't nearly as much ambiguity as to whether the combo is still going. While in SF6, for instance, the gap between the attacks is long enough to make you believe you'll get to act again, except you don't. At least not just yet. With that being said, what you might not realize is that combos are probably shorter than you think, and what really happens is that you are letting your opponent get away with unsafe moves through inaction or mistakes of your own making. Although those mistakes have usually more to do with lack of knowledge than lack of skill, and thankfully that's an easier problem to solve. If you see the combo counter reset, it means you had the opportunity to block the next flurry of attacks, or maybe even have your turn, but you didn't take it. If the screen says counter, you give your opponent a free combo by pressing the wrong button at the wrong time. And if it says punish, you're eating a combo because you misjudged your attack's range and or used one that was unsafe in that situation. I'm not saying this is easy, but recognizing those situations is an important step towards understanding when you get to press buttons. Also, this is why you should generally try to stop mashing, because when you do that, you cannot identify which action led to you being in a state where you are quote-unquote not playing the game. I can understand wanting to have some control over your character after making a mistake, and to be honest, yeah, I'd like that to be more of a common possibility in fighting games. But sometimes, that mistake was two or three decisions ago, and no amount of control over your actions is going to undo that mistake. In a racing game, if you go too fast and brake too late, you may technically still have control over the vehicle, but no matter what you do, you're going into the wall. No reasonable person is going to argue that because a racing game is about going fast, having to ease off the throttle or use the brakes is counter to the point of the game. Some might argue that you're put in this situation by another player and that makes it worse, but at the end of the day it's largely irrelevant, because just like in any competitive head-to-head -head activity, you don't do what you want you do what the situation calls for. Sometimes you have several options from which you can choose, and sometimes you only have one. But even then, you still have to recognize the situation and do the thing. 
Which brings us back to the original question of what does it mean to play the game in a fighting game? To me, it's about outplaying my opponent. Sometimes that means landing a sick combo, but often it means making their offense fail, or in other words, survive. I don't want to leave you without some advice, so here's a few tips. The first thing to accept is that when you're eating a combo, you're eating a combo. Being upset about it is only going to achieve one thing, distract you from getting ready to act when the combo ends. It doesn't make getting juggled any less frustrating, but if you put a pin on those feelings and focus on observing what your opponent is doing, you will be able to learn where the openings are and what moves you can challenge them with. And don't forget that if your counterplay stops working, it might be because your opponent adapted to it, so you have to adapt back or you'll return to square one. But even if you know what to do when, you will still fuck it up every now and then and be punished for it. And that's fine, shit happens, you'll get it right eventually, but it might take several games with the same player to get there. And of course, sometimes there is no opening because the combo will do enough damage to kill, even if it looks like you have a lot of health left. And in that case, just accept that and get ready for the next round. Although, don't let your guard down until the round is over. I cannot count the number of times that went like, I thought the combo was gonna kill so I stopped paying attention, but in fact it didn't, and I wasn't ready for the next attack so I died anyway. And finally, if you really can't get a breakthrough, take a break, because the more frustrated you get, the worse you'll play. Go watch some replays, or play a different game for a bit. I'm saying this to you as much as I'm saying it to myself. To conclude, it is true that if you're not good at the game, you might not be spending as much time pressing buttons, but you still have the opportunity to observe and learn from your opponent, which is still very much a part of playing the game. Is where I was going to end the video, but I ran into a game that made it challenging to follow my own advice. So in the spirit of transparency and to not look like a shield for a big fighting game, let's go for a semi-scripted story time. I bought Grand Blue Fantasy vs Rising when it came out, being quite fond of the previous one. You may remember me saying it was the first fighting game I bought when I got back into the genre. And holy shit do I suck at this game. My win rate is about 26%, which is way lower than in the other games I'm playing seriously. Even in the cesspool of smurfs that is taken 7 low ranks, I do a lot better. I mean, even in the first Grand Blue game, I did nearly twice as well, and with roughly the same amount of playtime, I also fared a lot better in DNF Duo. I switched to UL, not really vibing with Jita in this one, which helped a bit, but not that much. And that was super frustrating. I did not get why the knowledge from the previous game didn't seem to transfer, and at times I would get tilted to the point of just putting the controller down mid-match and waiting to die, which doesn't help my win rate. But it didn't make sense to have such a big difference in performance, so I tried to figure out what gives. I mean, skill issue is what gives, but and that's not enough information. Uh, first of all was to understand the game I'm dealing with. GBVSR is a game where block strings are long, combos longer, which means that mistakes are very expensive. You can relatively easily get a 30 to 40% combo of a single counter hit or punish, especially with the combo extender that is the new Raging Strike mechanic. And guess what? I'm getting counter hit and punished a lot. So what am I doing differently compared to other games where I'm performing much better? So I went to observe how I play in other games. The first thing I noticed is that my inputs are generally way cleaner compared to Grand Blue, or maybe more specifically, my inputs are way more intentional. The second thing is that in games where I'm playing better, I can see that I know when I need to stop pressing buttons. There's a clear moment where I switch from offense to defense, while in Grand Blue it looks like I just want to press my buttons. Obviously, a lot of this has to do with experience, as I'm comparing 50 hours of play with 500, but it does show that I need to calm down. So I try to play a lot more slowly, taking a more defensive approach, just blocking the opponent's strings and testing openings. Of course it means that I'm usually going to be thrown a lot, but that's the risk I'm going to take for the sake of learning. And it went better. I took more rounds, won more matches, and generally felt less overwhelmed in ranked. Now I'm not gonna lie, I'm still stuck in A5, with my personal best being a couple of set away from A3, and I was complaining about all the things that bother me about the game all the time, but I went from wanting to beg the devs to derank me, to sort of feeling like I belong where I am. 
this isn't where I want to be, obviously, uh, but it's progress. And as that happens, the next episode of FG2 I had already planned is actually about this part of the learning process. So it's a good thing a game is forcing me to go through it again. Thanks for the support on the channel, all the best for 2024, and see you in the next one.